In today's video, I want to take a look at why can't you actually have a recursive struct? So basically structs that hold themselves on the stack and you have to have them as a pointer to heap or to another stack. So we had something like this before where we had a type def struct node, we had an X value and then we had a struct node pointer next. So there was the struct that we used for linked list and here we should actually give it a type def name and this worked fine. So let's check out like exactly for example the size of this uh, struct. We can say here printf, we say percent %z u for the size and let's say size of node. I have talked about uh, the size of operator before. Um, I will link, I will have a link up top. But if we launch this, you will see that uh, we get 16 as a return. Why is it 16? Well, we do have eight bytes here because this is a pointer and we have another four bytes here because an integer is on the four, on four bytes usually, right? That's only 12 if we add them up, but we get 16 because of alignment. What do I mean by alignment? Basically, for every single element that uh, we have on a struct, it has to be allocated on a memory that is divisible by its own size, right? Therefore, when we have this struct, we actually have right, the two elements here, and the integer is here, the x value, and the node on the next pointer is here, and there are four bytes of padding simply because we want this next node to be at address eight, right? Uh, that's not an eight, this is an eight, right? And the X doesn't need to be moved because that's already at address zero, which is already divisible by four in this case. Okay, so that's kind of how this struct looks like in memory. It can be easily representable, perfectly fine. Now, what if I, I just want this next node to be with me on the stack, right? In the same struct as, you know, uh, as the X value. So we don't have to dereference things because, well, it's quite inefficient and sometimes we actually want to have things on the stack. So can we get rid of this pointer? Well, in fact, we cannot. And we are going to get a, an error that says that the type struct node is incomplete. So hold on a second. We cannot have other structs inside the, our structs. In fact, we can have another struct. We can say here, let's say type def struct, oh, I don't know, let's say foo. And we're going to have here another integer. And if we change this to foo, notice no pointers here. We are just, um, we are just saving this foo struct right inside the node struct. It works perfectly fine. If you try to compile and launch this, you'll say, you'll see we, we get eight because, well, four bytes are allocated for the X integer and then four bytes are allocated for the foo uh, struct simply because the foo struct only has one integer, which is also four. So four plus four is eight, nothing too strange there. So we can, in fact, store other structs inside our struct without having to um, have pointers to those structs. That's perfectly fine. But here we cannot have the node inside the same, or inside its own struct on the stack for a very simple reason. What is the size of this struct? How can we calculate it? Well, let's, well, let's try at least, right? So let's say this is the struct. We have this uh, integer x and well, suppose we have the same situation here where we have the padding and then we have the next struct, which I'm just going to note it down with another box that has what? It has another x, right? So, and let's suppose that also we have this padding here. And inside of it, we have another box with, of course, X here. And let's say again, we have this padding here and so on and so forth. We can do this forever. <laughs> and you can start to see this problem. Uh, we basically don't have a size for this struct simply because it just goes on forever. And because it's on the stack, we're no longer, we're no longer dealing with pointers, where we know pointers are just eight bytes. We, we cannot 
know uh, the size and we need to know that because it's on the stack. And this sort of ties in with the difference between the stack and the heap, right? With the heap, you can malloc and you can free whatever you want. It doesn't matter. You can change it at runtime, however you'd like. But with the stack, you have to know the size of whatever you're trying to allocate. So whenever I say here node n, this n has to have a size because when C or when the program is launched, before launching, before launching the first instruction of this um, of this function, let's say the sprint f, the program allocates enough space for our local variables on the stack, right? So it allocates enough space for this node, but what is that enough space? There's no such thing if we have recursive types like this on the stack. You need to have a pointer for that. And now, of course, that would work perfectly fine. All right, that's about it. I hope you got something out of this video. Even though you never encountered this situation, I hope you understood something about uh, the stack versus the heap memory. Um, and if you do have any questions, leave them down in the comments below or on our Discord server. Again, the source code can be found on the description below. Take care. Bye.